Okay, so this is the very first lecture I do in my class. Um, this is usually the Thursday after for the first week. Um, and students are going to just kind of get thrown into the deep end of the pool and learn how to create sketches in SolidWorks. So we start by going File New. And normally we're on the novice version of this dialog box. We're going to select part because we're going to create a part and we're going to say OK. All right, and you'll notice we have a front plane, a top plane, and a right plane. And you can shade those by clicking on the show so that you can see the front plane, the top plane, and the right plane. And so all sketches get hosted by a plane. All sketches go on a plane. So you need to have, decide what plane you're going to use for your sketch. And there are a couple of different ways to create a sketch or start a sketch. You can select the plane you want to use and then select sketch, like so. Or you can select front plane in the browser and select sketch. Or you can see the sketch ribbon right here. You can select sketch on the sketch ribbon and then select the plane you want to use. Um, once you've selected the plane, you don't need to really see your planes anymore, so I usually turn off visibility. And you just see an origin right here. And I normally go through this exercise twice. The first time I show how to do it the best way, and the second time I just show you all the errors that students tend to make and how to fix them. Um, so I know I'm in sketch mode because I see exit sketch on the ribbon, and I see the exit sketch here and the X. If you click on the X, that basically deletes any of your work. It's kind of like a cancel function. So I don't recommend you doing the X. Um, one of the things that a lot of new users make, one of the mistakes they make, is that they tend to delete and undo, delete and undo, and you never move forward. It's better and best to fix your errors as you go um, than to constantly go backwards. Otherwise, you'll never be done because you're constantly undoing and trying to, you just get more and more frustrated. So um, I'm going to kind of walk you through it. Um, we start with a circle. We want the circle to be coincident to the origin. So we click on that origin right there and we place the circle. And notice I'm still in circle mode, so I right click and go select and that exits me out of circle mode. Notice that my circle is blue, which indicates that it's underdefined. It says underdefined right down here. Um, why it's underdefined is we don't, haven't put a size for the circle yet. And I normally do the geometric constraints first, and then I add the dimensions so that I get my shape the way I want it, and then I add the sizes. And the other thing I advise my students is to start big, and then as you add your dimensions, it will shrink to size. Um, what you don't want to happen is you don't want um, to be working in a really tiny, tiny cramped space and where you can't see what you're doing. So we start with a circle. Then I'm going to select the line tool here on the sketch ribbon. Um, I'm just lining up the line with that origin there. I'm coming straight down. And notice I see a vertical constraint, and then a horizontal constraint, and then a vertical and then a horizontal. And now I'm doing an angled line. And notice that it's lining up the end point of the angled line with the horizontal line, and then going over, and then coming up. And once again, I'm um, lining up with that origin and then coming over. And then I'm going to right click select. And then I'm going to do a three point arc from here to here. Um, notice I've got a coincident point. So I've lined up the end point with the origin. And notice if I highlight, it shows it. And then I also have a horizontal line. Okay, um, And I want to do a three-point arc. And notice if you do the arc, it shows you the mouse click. So one is the first mouse click, two is the second mouse click, three is the third mouse click. So those numbers are there to help you figure out what to pick. So this is my first mouse pick. This is my second mouse pick. This is my third mouse pick. So this is the basic shape I'm doing. Um, and now I'm going to add relationships or geometric constraints. So I come up to the ribbon, and you see add relation right here. And I want this arc and this circle to be concentric. So you see a concentric right there. 
Concentric means they share the same center point, but different radiuses. And then I'm going to clear my selections, and I still have the Add Relations dialog box open. And I want a tangent relationship between that arc and that line. So that adjusts, and then I clear selections. I want this line, angled line, and this line to be parallel. So I select parallel. And notice I don't get freaked out when things get um, weird. I want a collinear relationship between this line and this line. So I say this line and this line, and I set them collinear, which means that they're on the same axis. So notice that I still have my basic shape. So now it's time to start adding dimensions. I can use the Smart Dimension tool up here, or I can right click and select Smart Dimension on my right click. Either one works for me. Okay. So this diameter is 20, okay, and this radius is 25, okay, this is 100, okay, this is 40, this is 35, and notice it got all misty, and this is where a lot of students would undo or um, get freaked out, but notice I can just drag the points to clean up my my um, object. All right, and I'm going back to Smart Dimension, and this is 50, and the dimension from here to here is 30, okay? And then the last dimension I need to add is the angle dimension. Notice it's still underdefined. And you can see that these two lines are blue, so I know that once I add my angle dimension, it's going to be fully defined. So I'm going to select this line, and then this line, and then it automatically goes to an angle, and I just set it to 60, and now it shows it's fully defined. It says fully defined down here, everything's black. Then I'm going to go to Features, Extrude, and I'm just going to extrude at the default 10 millimeters, green check, and there's my widget. So you can see what my shape looked like. It was very fast and easy to do. Okay, so that was the first way, and that's where I don't do any errors or any mistakes, and I just walk through it so students can see what needs to be done. Now I'm going to do it a second time, and this time I'm going to show what, what kind of errors I see my students doing and how to fix them. So I'm going to come up, I'm going to go um, File New, and I can come File New here, or I can come up New right here. All right, and once again, I'm still doing a part. Okay, I'm checking my units that they're in millimeters, which is what I want. I'm starting my sketch on the front plane. Okay, and I'm going to draw a circle. And notice I can draw a circle. It does not have to be on the plane, okay, or on the origin. And and you see, I'm like purposely being really yucky. Okay, so you can see that I've got the lines in there, but none of the lines are correct. So if I select the line, I can say I want that line to be vertical. I can select this line and say I want that one to be horizontal. I want this line to be uh, vertical. See that? And so as I go through, it's kind of fixing and adjusting itself. Okay, so I, again, I can use those just geometric constraints to help me get the shape that I want. All right, and I want this line and this line to be collinear, so I can add a relation between this line and this line and set them to be collinear. And I want this line and this line to be parallel. See that? So see, just right there, I've kind of gotten my shape in the place that I want it. Notice I can drag things up and down, right? And I'm going to add my three-point arc. Okay, there's my three-point arc. So I've got my basic shape, but it still doesn't look right. But I'm going to add some dimensions and um, add some additional constraints as I go so that you can clean it up. So I'm going to um, go to Smart Dimension. Oh, I'm going to add relation, and I want a concentric relation, whoops, sorry, between this arc and this circle. So I select the outside of the circle and I say concentric, okay? And um, I want this endpoint and this um, origin 
to be lined up horizontally. So that, that goes there. And I want this arc and this line to be tangent. So notice it adjusts right there. So just by adding those geometric constraints, I get it looking closer and closer to what I want. So now I'm going to start adding dimensions. So this is going to be 20. This is going to be 25. This is going to be 100. This is going to be 40. This is going to be 35. This is going to be 50. From here to here is 30. OK. Oh, and it got messed up. And again, you don't need to panic. Just select that end point there and you can just drag it into position. Okay, so see how I kind of adjust it so that it does what I want, all right? And then I want an angle dimension. Okay, now it looks correct, but it's still underdefined. And the reason it's underdefined is I don't have, I haven't established a relationship between the origin and the center point here. So there's a couple different ways I can do it. I could just drag and drop it there. Okay, but if it doesn't attach or doesn't latch on, I need to add a relationship. So I select that center point, I select the origin, I set coincident, boom. And you see that it's fully defined. So I want you to remember that at the beginning it was all messed up, it was kind of all catawaki, and it did not take that much to fix it. And you'll notice I didn't do any undos or deletes to fix it because that would have um, made mean that would be starting over and we don't want to start over we want to move forward at all times and so and then we go features extruded bus space green check and we have our widget so that's the first uh, exercise I have my students do in the class